So, yet again, is this the second Geek Nights in a row where we're talking about an anime from Sai and Saru? Uh, Sai and Saru is uh, too powerful for this earth. Yeah, they're just making too many goddamn animes for everyone. If you don't know, Sai and Saru is the studio uh, of Masaki Iwasa and uh, uh, Friends that has produced many great works. That what was ma- the, the Weeb Simpsons meme where it was Milhouse's dad? He's like, I got fired because I said that uh, Science right. Saru was being too productive. Yeah, if you listen to the last episode we did on Ride Your Wave, you can hear us talk all about them so we don't need to repeat ourselves on that. But they have a TV show that is coming out right now or just came out. I don't know if it's done yet. If it did, If it is done, it was done very recently. I watched the first four episodes. Rim watched some more than that, probably. Uh, I actually only watched the first four. I started the fifth oh. one, but then I stopped because Emily and I are going to watch the whole thing together. All right. So the first thing we had to talk about in this show, keep your hands off eyes, Ken, is the beginning. The fucking opener. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay. So this opener comes on, right, with this Easy Breezy song. Easy Breezy. It's already I, stuck in my head on permanent loop. Immediately. I basically have a hundred percent deja vu back to Kodocha. Yeah. It's the same fucking song, and there's a dance, and it's almost it's a very similar dance. The song is like with the same instruments in the same key or whatever. I don't fucking know music theory, yep. but it's the same goddamn song, the same chord progression, the same everything. And the and the opening itself, like the animation, is just great and weird and funny and. It gave me a lot of just like, it gave me that feeling of a lot of the anime I really liked during like right. anime club eras. Exactly. I mean, there is no guarantee that, right, that a show that has a dance opener or closer will be a good show. Mahoro Matic, for example, yep. had the Mahoro Mambo as the closer. Not a great show. But, you know, the tradition is still long and, you know, good, right? As you got the, the Kodocha, I think, is the oldest one I know of. Yep. Uh, obviously, the Harahar Yukai is probably the biggest one. And now this is the new one, the Easy Breezy. So yep. that's already, Easy you turn breezy. this show on, you already, you see Sai and Saru. It's like, that's good sign number one. Then you see a dance as the opener, and you're like, that's good sign number two. Uh, this is guaranteed good anime. I don't even need to yep. tell you anything. I'm going home. And then the characters <laughs> in the opener are goony and weird and move weird. And I got a lot of the vibe. It basically set off an instinct that has not set off for a long time. An instinct from back when we ran the RIT Anime Club. My brain said, we have to show this at the club. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this show would have been one of those shows. So here's the, the summary of the plot of this show, right? So there is a high school, but it's sort of a... It seems- it's set much like Madoka Magica in a near future. Yeah, it's definitely a sort of the the architecture and the 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 geography of the high school is weird. Like this water nearby, it seems like almost like a fantastic, a, a semi fantastical anime town, right? Uh, where it's like you know the high school is in the town. It's not just like a high school separated from everything else. Yeah, like, it's not Utana. Utana, right? Yeah, uh, there's definitely town scenes and things like that. It's not all in the high school, but the architecture of the high school is strange. It has a lot of buildings. They're all stacked up vertically. It and, feels like near future, like post some climate yeah, change it, problems. Yeah, it's definitely unique uh, in some ways. And there's a lot of environmental storytelling around that. Like just one random thing that I want to point out, like to. St- the schools, like the teachers in the school, their offices are clearly in what used to be a pool. Yep. Like specifically, they've turned this pool into office space. Yep. So anyway, then you've got, uh, the architecture is weird. The social environment of the school seems pretty typical Japanese high school with a little bit of anime craziness. Yep. It's not as crazy as some other animes out there where high school doesn't even happen and no one goes to class. Yep. Right? But it definitely but feels... Like, you know what it feels like? Especially this, this episode where we saw the student council for the first time. Mm-hmm. It feels like the way it felt to be running clubs in a college or high uh, school. It feels to me more like what you see in um, El Hazard or even though the school there, the school mm-hmm. scenes are brief or um, the which one? There's a lot of anime that could apply to. Uh, the one with the three witches. My Sky Tai? Yes. <laughs> right? Where the school, it's still a high school environment, but it's just a little bit crazy. It's not Cromarty crazy. Nope. It's just like regular high school with a dash of Cromarty, like so a little sprinkle. A, so there's a dash of crazy. There's a dash of like goon characters, like background idiots doing background idiot stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the club that's ask like the club that was asking for the weird thing. Right. It's you know what it's like. It's sort of like um, 
uh, Studio Trigger with the witches. <laughs> Little Witch Academia? Yes, but only without the fantasy. <laughs> Remove the fantasy from Little Witch Academia. But couple- it's the same sort of social aspect to that school. Yeah, but couple it with an environment that is clearly set in a near future where things are different for right. future reasons, but not that far off. All right, so there are students at this school, but really we only care about three of them. The three of them, I forget all their names. <laughs> yeah. the, the main the main ish one because that's like the first one you're introduced to even though they're all sort of equally main uh they're all girls all right is sort of like this crazy anime nerd right who loves drawing mechs and is totally nuts and is really good at drawing yep, into weird shit like likes to explore the weird town right, and has, draw a, stuff. has a wild animation imagination not right yeah. um right and that's like the main character the, their best friend is the tall, skinny, serious character who's sort of serious. They care a lot about money. Yep. Right? They have a more of a head on their shoulders, but they're also sort of uh, greedy. Yep. And, they uh, remind me of... Oh, manipulative. They remind me of a lot of the... There's characters like this in like every old anime. But not stupid and still has... You know, good, mostly good intentions, right? The similar, uh, they come across a lot like Susie from Little Witch Academia, the poison yep. one. How do I finally remember the character's name? <laughs> yeah, but right? what's, what's her name from Ronma One Half? God, I've just been a while. <laughs> Feeling old here. We're the old men. Oh, who was the character in that show? Was that Tenchi Muyo? <laughs> I think that was Tenchi Muyo. Okay, and the third character is the plot of the first episode is sort of the, those two characters bringing this third one into their fold, right? They're at the anime club, and this third character gets chased out of the anime club by men in black. Sort of a, you know, ridiculous scene. And this third character is like a famous celebrity child model actor person who's at the school and loves anime and is mad rich and has mad rich parents and is like famous and, you know, whatever. Uh, and they care, they like anime a lot and they're good at drawing but their parents don't want to let them join the anime club. So like their personal security guards who are like, you know, taking care of them, uh, you know, came after them, right? You have to get them out of the anime club. Right. So these two other main characters are at the anime club, saw this uh, and ended up through stuff, ending up teaming up and making the three person team that forms the main three characters of the show. Two artist animators Mm -hmm. and the level headed and perfectly reasonable producer pulling it all together. Yes. The three friends, their relationship and their character aspects, right? Perfectly match what's going on in an animation studio. One person represents the management, right? Uh, needing to get things done on time, needing money, needing to stay in budget, wanting to actually get shit done, and the other two people are imaginative, creative types, right? Who need to be, you know, they have a lot of drive to get things done, but they want to do it their way, right? And they have two different ways, right? One is the crazy sort of mecha artist, and the other one, the rich one, the character artist, right? Basically. Is the character artist, right? Who wants to, you know, make the animations really detailed and have lots of frames and, you know, draw like real life, or is the crazy one? wants to draw mechs and backgrounds and environments, right? And and basically the, the first four episodes, like the arc to get you started on the show is just they form the club. If there's club politics to form clubs, they work hard and they basically make the their daikon animation. Right, they couldn't form an anime club because there was one, so they formed a film club. The anime club in the show is really just like our anime club. It was about watching anime. Yep. Their club is about producing anime. Uh, right. So that, and their call up is the Azo Ken. Yep. They, they, they lie and say they're a generic film club to get their club license. And now the clock is ticking to be so impressive that the school can't just like revoke their charter because they're not making films. Right. Cause even though one person is rich, they need this. They can't really use that money. They need the school's money to produce the anime they want to make. And what the real conceit of the show is not that main plot. The real conceit of the show is that much in the way that say an Utena or other shows have a s- episodic structure where there is sort of like a battle in each yep. episode, right? In this show, basically in each episode, there is sort of a point at which the characters cross over into the animation that they are making. And the, it's like, it's all anime. You're watching an anime, you at home, the real person, right? But the anime that you're watching, those characters in their world, 
their world crosses over with the world of the animation that they're making or have already made, right? And that is sort of like the duel, right? That happens in each episode. Clearly representing on one hand, Mm -hmm. usually the third character being dragged into their like imagination and then kind of implicitly getting excited about the idea, even if they ostensibly aren't. But also other people being dragged in, right? And they're trying to demonstrate the power of like, this is what animation is. Yep. Right? You're you're inflicting your imagination in, upon others and you make it real for them with the power of many drawings. But coupled right? with like the actual and then, right? But the actual process they show in the show like gets pretty detailed and pretty realistic. Right. So usually you see this a lot in pretty much every medium of art, right? Paintings of people painting things, yep. right? Songs about making music, right? I want to rock and roll night and party <laughs> every day, right? Movies about making fucking movies, singing in the rain, right? Uh, books about fucking authors. Uh, it's too many of those. Video yeah. games about video games. There's actually not as many of those as there could be, but there yep. are still more than zero. But a lot of the anime about making anime... Comic books about comic books don't even get me fucking started. Manga about manga, I just read one the other day. <laughs> But a lot of them focus a lot more on the actual character drama and they kind of gloss right. over or put very scant detail into the actual right, right. like thing that they're addressing. Anime about anime. There's animation runner Karomi, right? Yep. There's, there's, the, there's tons of these. So if you're going to do one of those, right, a thing about the medium that it is in, right, there is a high bar to get over to you know make that acceptable and not just be another one of those. And the one way you can do it is just by executing on such a high level that it's like, oh, you're you're the best song about songs ever. So it's okay for you to be a song about songs. This is a tribute. Right. Uh, The other way to do it is to do what's going on here. This isn't, you know, it might be the best anime about anime. Maybe it's Taku no videos up there. I don't know. Regardless of that, the angle on this is different. It's only slightly meta, you know, detailing about the production of anime, right? The message is like, you know, how animators feel about anime, right? Yeah, but the, also it is, it's good about the, like, the nuance of the animators want to do one thing. They don't even fully agree with each other. And then there's budget and other constraints. And how does the finished idea that comes to a screen evolve and how it often ends up radically different from what the animators actually wanted. And that's just how things right. work. Well, but also it's, you know, but that's, it's that's there, but it's about the power of mm-hmm. the animation itself, right? Mm-hmm. Which the other anime about anime are not about the power of anime. Animation Runner Karomi isn't about the power of animation. Otaku no Video isn't about the power of animation. Yep. What makes that medium strong and effective? This one, the whereas, first arc builds up to, here's our fucking Daikon animation, and we're just going to watch it <laughs> in the show, right. in the context of the show, but then and it, it's great. This anime is literally illustrating animations you know having literal power right to sort of inflict their you know worlds upon people Mm -hmm. right in a in a fantastic and supernatural possibly way yeah you trigger someone's imagination and they're off right uh i am really enjoying watching uh the producer get sort of dragged into this nonsense reluctantly but not as reluctantly like they protest a lot but they're kind of into it in the end. <laughs> I'm actually kind of liking how when they bring in... So I thought that like they were mostly good... Because the, war- the other stuff outside of the three characters is not brought in very much, right? It has not a lot of screen time. But like they're actually giving it more than I thought. And well, like, like the teacher seems like he's a, like the teacher's really trying to help them, and right, that's going to be a the, theme. Like the beard teacher. My beard is heavy again. Yes, that beard teacher. Like I thought he was just going to be like there and gone. It's like no, the beard teacher actually seems like he's a thing. He's more than he's doing more than the club advisor and Yoa Pedalos. He's doing more than any club advisor we ever had did. Right, the club advisor and Yoa Pedalos and do jack shit. He's like yep. just there because they have to have one. Right? Or like the student council. I hope they come back because they are great. Yeah, it's like the fact that they decided to make character designs for the student council shows me that they're going to be real characters, right? Yep. That have meaning and whatever. And also, like, the show is just really well. Like, the animation's great. Well, the I mean, voice acting's great. Of course. <laughs> the show is funny as you shit. You thought they were going to do. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, this show, I have laughed more at this than most comedy anime I've seen in a while. Yeah. Like, but this you can is tell what's happening biz. in this show is that the imaginations of the real animators working on it, 
right, through this mechanism that they have created, are able to take their completely crazy, you know, out of context ideas and insert them into the show as the character's ideas. Those characters then draw those ideas, which are then brought to life in the show, right? Not in, not really brought to life, right? And so it's like, haha, we have created this structure by whereby we can do all this crazy stuff that we want to do. And it's as it's, but pass it off as crazy stuff someone else wants to do. And then we get to draw what we yeah. want to draw. But like right? one of my favorite scenes, I think it's even in the second episode, is they do the whole like into the other anime world thing and they draw all this stuff and they're flying around. And then it zooms back out like very carefully to. They're standing there and they literally have one piece of paper with one image on it, just sitting on top of another piece of paper with another image. And all that in their imagination came from them looking at this one picture. Right. But it, like, you know, another high school anime that say wanted to have a tank in it would have to hang, you know, be like, all right, well, there's a, they're, they're trained, their students are training for this war, right? Here, they can have one episode can have a tank and the next episode can have, you know, planes. The producer at one point is even like, look, we're cutting the plot. Just draw the tank and the machete girl. Yep. <laughs> no plot. But it's like, <laughs> but it's like the point is every episode of this show going forward, they'll be able to draw whatever crazy shit they want, right? Whatever those characters are imagining and whatever they want to draw in their anime, right? The people who are making the show in real life can now draw all sorts of crazy stuff. They can draw some romance. Yeah. They can draw some comedy. They can draw anything because they've made a, you know, the, the, the thing that's consist. they've made a frame of these three characters and this school. And that frame is around a blank anime canvas because the characters are making an anime. And now they can just put whatever they want there episode to episode. But it helps that the three characters are just great. Like they're really good, distinct, unique, quirky characters that yeah, I enjoy despite a Despite being, you know, characters you see in a lot of anime, right? They're well, they're done well. They have a lot. They're crooked slightly, so they have a lot more subtle bits going on that make them much more complete than similar characters from other shows. Like the fact that the main girl, when she gets nervous, kind of talks like an old grandpa, mm -hmm. and like things like that. The voice actor definitely <laughs> <laughs> is is not what you would typically assign for. Uh, you know, a female high school girl character. Like, I'm into the show enough to where I'm just going to watch the whole thing. Like, I do not need any prompting to finish this show pretty quickly. No. It's not even all out yet. Nope. Oh, how many episodes is it going to be? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. I want to say it was like a typical 26-ish show. Mm. There are 11 out so far. Okay. I don't know how many there's going to be total. Yep, I don't know I've either. I've seen four, so... Doesn't seem like a reason not to watch the rest. Yep, here. and episode 11 just came out two days ago. All right, so it's on Crunchyroll. It's probably on somewhere else too, but Crunchyroll yep. seems like the place. If you haven't been watching a lot of anime lately, like you could do worse to come back into you're anime by watching this. You're going to be stuck at home you, if you're really so bored and you really have nothing to do that you're listening to fucking Geek Nights. Holy shit, what a waste <laughs> of your time. You could have watched one or two episodes of this in the time it took you to watch Geek Nights. Mistakes were made. Uh, go correct your mistakes now. You can watch them at the same time. Do not listen to another Geek Nights. <laughs> Instead, watch this show. <laughs>